call this video Close Miking Kills Kittens. Okay, all joking aside, um, if any of you have been watching the recent Beatles Get Back, Let It Be documentary, one thing you'll notice, uh, which I think answers a lot of questions, is that the guitar amps, which are twins, are mic'd with Neumann large diaphragm condensers from about uh, two to three feet back. Uh, not only that, they are mic'd not on the speaker cone, but as an instrument as a whole. In other words, the mic is placed to capture the box uh, of the twin. Uh, it looks like the mic is actually aimed between the two speakers of the twin. Uh, typically, these days, if you go and do a gig, sound man takes a flashlight, takes a... Uh, a dynamic mic like this or the ever popular SM57 uh, takes the flashlight, locates your cone of your speaker and then pushes the, the dynamic right up against the grill cloth of uh, the cone and your speaker. Um, I've never liked the sound of that particular miking technique. Uh, it always makes your guitar amp sound crispy and crunchy but not the good crunchy. Uh, so uh, this sort of discussion came up again. We are watching the uh, the Beatles presentation and uh, amongst the guitar player friends the discussion was how the heck does John get such a nice fat sound out of a twin? Uh, you know, silver face twin or twins in general are not known for their uh, fat mid-range distortion character and yet we hear that sound on, on that uh, video and those records. Um, Anyway, I think the answer is uh, possibly the way the cabinets were mic'd and what they were mic'd with. Uh, this is an ART C3. It's a relatively cheap uh, multi pattern condenser. Uh, it's got a switchable pattern and uh, low end cut as well as. Um, uh, gain cut so that you can get it a little closer to a guitar amp than most uh, most of these type of mics. Again, not on the speaker, but miking the cabinet as a whole. Uh, pretty d dynamite results. Hey, we're checking out uh, miking. It's an AC30. I've played this AC50. 
Wow. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 